Let's look at some applied examples of definite integration. So marginal analysis, again, anytime you're talking about a marginal, you're talking about our derivative. So it says the marginal profit for a product is modeled by dp dx equals negative 0.0002x plus 14.2. It says find the change in profit when sales increase from 100 to 101 units. Again, it wants to find the sales change in profit, which is the original function. We are given the marginal profit, which is the derivative function. So in order to find that profit function, we need to integrate the marginal profit function. Then it wants to know the sales increase from 100 to 101 units. Well, in general, the way that we would do that is we would find the profit of 101 units minus the profit of 100 units. So we need to plug in the numbers 101 and then plug in the number 100 and then subtract those two values. Well, we can simplify this by setting it up as a definite integral from 100 to 101. Again, this is a definite integral because we need to integrate that marginal profit of negative 0.0002x plus 14.2 dx. So the way that we're going to find the change in the profit is we're going to integrate the marginal profit and then we're going to plug in 101 and 100. So let's go ahead and integrate this. This would be negative 0 0.0002 but then it would be x squared over 2 and then you'd have plus 14.2x. Again though we need to evaluate this from 100 to 101. I'm going to simplify this a little bit. This is negative 0.0001x squared plus 14.2x. That's evaluated from 100 to 101. Now let's go ahead and plug in our numbers. So we'd have negative 0.001, sorry, 0001. And this would be times 101 squared plus 14.2 times 101. And then from there, I'm going to subtract off. I'm going to do the exact same thing, but plug in the number 100. So this would be negative 0.0001 times 100 squared plus 14.2 times 100. Plug that into your calculator, being extremely careful with your parentheses on this one. Round to the nearest cent. It seems to me that I'm getting approximately a change in a profit of $14.00 and 18 cents. Again, this doesn't mean the profit in general is only $14.18. It means that the change in profit. So when I sold that 101st unit, that single 101st unit, I made $14.18 just off of that 101st unit. That's what that's telling us. Okay. Now it says, part B, find the change in profit when sales increase from 100 to 110 units. Well, that would be the exact same thing, except we'd be integrating from 100 to 110. I'm not going to show all that work again because we've already done that work, okay? So essentially, I'm just going to write same dot 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 for continue the process because we've already shown the work. Essentially all we would do is we would go to that last step that we were at and we would plug in 110 instead of um, 101. So here we would have negative 0.0001 times 110 squared plus 14.2 times 110. We would take that and we would subtract off point sorry negative point zero 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 one times one hundred squared plus fourteen point two times one hundred again plugging that into our calculator being extremely extremely careful and what would we have the change in profit being uh, round to the nearest cent I'm getting approximately one hundred forty one dollars and seventy nine cents so what does that mean? That means once we sold the 101st to the 110th unit, so those 10 units, the 101 to 110 units, I increased my profit by $141, or I made $141 in some units. Okay. So what do we know? We know to find an average, you add everything up, and then you divide it by the number there are. Well, that works if it's nice, something finite, definite, 
um, like a, a nice, you know, test scores. If I want you to find the average test score, you would add up all the test scores and then you would divide it by the number of students. But what if it's not finite definite where it's like individual scores? What if it's a continuous function? How do you find the average value of a continuous function? Something that doesn't have a single value but an infinite amount of values. And the answer is integration is essentially adding up a bunch of function values. So when you look at this first part right here, the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx, that's like adding up all the y values. So if we add up all the y values, we need to divide it by the number of x values. So how do you find the number of x values? It would be b minus a, where b is your right endpoint and a is your left endpoint. So, how do you find the average value of a function? You're going to do the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx. That's like adding up all the y values, adding up all the grades, if you will. And then you divide it by 1 over b minus a, which is the length of x, or the number of x values that there are there. So, divide it by 1 over b minus a, or multiply by 1 over b minus a. That's the same thing. So this is how we're going to find an average value of a function, and we'll do this on the next example.